Hello everybody, this is Teva D'Arcy and welcome. This is the Apostolic Ministry Teaching Headquarters of the uh, of the Cross Body Unity Book of Ephesians 4 Body of Christ, trying to keep it positive. Even though we have all sorts of different levels of operation, such as dysfunction, such as supernatural, such as fear of the Lord, such as People want to do politics and get in their way, and then really the quality of the harmonious uh, remnant, things like that. So we've got a lot of levels, but I'm going to teach on basically try to get through the series. I heard the witch watcher call my name, and I want to tell you, I've had some major experiences. Uh, if you were not knowing the Holy Spirit, knowing the Lord and good ministry, quality people, because I was raised under quality government, Nobody ever told me this existed when I was a Southern Baptist firstborn daughter come down from Bible teachers of at least three generations of Christians. Natural people, high functioning, good quality by God's mercy. See, it isn't because that's a brag. That is a perspective God wanted me to have to teach so I could discern and detect what is not functional in relationships and in, in, in a holy fear of the Lord. Nobody's perfect. I'm no super saint, neither were they, but it was at least, you know, when you have your hard drive, let me explain. When you have a kid, a little kid is picking up the environment. The little kid can pick up dysfunction, abuse, anger, religious spirit, racism, all sorts of things, Gen you know, misogyny. I didn't have that. Why? I don't know. It was just a miracle. It's by God's grace. It gives me a backstory that's a protect, uh, perspective for this movement. But that didn't mean it was excellent and perfect. That means that you have your backstory. It could be better than mine, bigger than mine. You might have been through horrible, damaging abuse, which is your testimony of victory and power. So it's nothing, you know, let's not get on this, oh, who, you know, all that stuff that goes on, rivalry and and who knows all that stuff. We're just trying to hear God. So with that said, I'm going to say I never was around, by God's grace, dysfunction in Christian leadership in the character of Christ. And that's why I would like to talk about it for when people go to church and want to obey, want to hear God and submit to God. I'm, the word I'm using, submit, is so big. <laughs> that's why I'm using it because this group, the, the Worldwide Whelp, LP and Levitical Matriarchy as well, that is the most, I guess you'd say, abusive word. The meaning of the way they, you know, what I've discovered, I never was raised. I was raised submitted in Ephesians 5.21, like a lot of people. And then if you're married and you want to please the Lord in the Bible and you're married and a Christian, you do, if you're a woman, you are Ephesians 5.22. So that was natural, not a big deal. It's when you go out into different kinds of people groups, usually not diverse, that have the law, old-timey law or old-timey up in the hills, way back when tradition of fault finding and hierarchy and good old boyism, good old, you know, that Mountain Williams school of country law that accuses, that's authoritarian. Now see, I was raised, there's clearly a meaning to teach. There is authority, Christian authority, male and female. Person's authority given by God in their viewpoint, their demeanor. You can have a demeanor of more authority toward authoritarian. But I am, this is persuasive. And I am similar to the verse, like my dad was persuasive, my family were more persuasive. They weren't big boss. But that is out there and that's part of human nature and ministry. So we want to teach quality authority, whether you have a more persuasive Isaiah 1, 18, which is persuasive to me, come let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, he will wash them white as snow. Come on, let's just talk about it. You can get over it. You can get past it. I'm not going to kill you. God won't murder. You know, this is the way we're trying to teach it and reframe it for people who've never met the Lord, who've had hard times with Christian authority and their parenting authority. And I will have a, have a special men's, Christian men's mantled side, and it's going to be there. I hope to have many guests that are men on there as well. But we're going to present Selah's. A lot of the reason God wants this kind of person happens to be a human sent in, you know, as a female, is because a lot of people have been through abuse by 
fathers or they've had no fathers and were raised by women so this is a reason I've studied it from every angle because I never wanted to be this I never wanted to do this I didn't have to do it I wasn't women's lib why <laughs> why because I was raised liberated I wasn't raised back under the law I was raised more sheltered because I didn't know about all this horrible stuff going on in Christian you know I mean really I was it took me this many years decades to get brave enough to be this bold one reason I know I have to be this bold is because the big boss will come after you male and female they will just territorial turf you're under us and that is what I have never ever wanted to know but now I know the turf of when you go toward the book of Acts Holy Spirit country law folk good people wrong doctrine some of them not all three kinds of ministers right now this is after close to 50 years of being sent to study the body this is not angry this is passionate this is concern for the future church that they'll this kind of group is so big it will let it happen we want to find people who are wanting to go to church and you can see the church is in decline in numbers hey I'm not worried about it but I'm teaching it to correct it reprove it admonish it encourage it and most of all deliver it deliver it so we had to go through the understanding and I really respect them I mean they they're humans they're not perfect I'm not perfect but it's a subculture that is confused in its authoritarianism totalitarianism turf protecting and they're not really they're under the law with a lot of bias and they are territorial and will go after you. if they just leave off the going after people that they've never talked to and never will because they think they are entitled to do it it has just been a big field and within that group the totalitarian kind <laughs> there is the witch watching there is the occult so submission teaching if I go back to think now what is it I've seen it's not Ephesians 521 at all it's not Isaiah 118 at all it's not Ephesians 521 like the first church was servant leader mutual submission in the fear of the Lord no it's everybody submitted to us our way our style everybody it has to do with some teaching that's come in charismatic teaching prophetic ministry teaching big boss combined with the law maybe some evil eye from the Salem witch trials because they were whelp Western European Levitical shape shep, patriarchy then we add in the uh, new one magazine of the 70s or 60s that said the shepherding movement from the deep south country law all white men are over all the women you know women should be seen and not heard but this is over in even any colonial it's white colonial even though I'm Caucasian colonial I am a diverse person I just have the energy I, I don't want to have you as my turf or my slave <laughs> I don't want to be there I want you to hear God that's all I want to do is help you you know so we're trying to get differences you know there are different kinds of Christians that are black within the black race there are different kinds of white Christians that are in the white race and I'm a we not a we centric so I've studied it to give vocabulary training there is we colonial which is this kind the whelp we are the world colonial we rule no question about it no you know that's the way it is I'm not I'm servant leader approachable and I am very diverse I am called and I have a different energy I think that stirs them because I'm not Cajun I'm French Huguenot I'm French Huguenot so I have a lot of different vibes going on you know and I have rhythm I really do naturally so and joy so when we look at different people God wants to bring forth or use out there now there could be any race any color any style we colonial British or African or Hispanic or South Pole North Pole anybody in between anywhere we just want to be it safe for everybody we want people not to be accused if they want to go to church they have a ministry 
but you've never heard of them, but you look at them because you've never met anybody of their breed. You've all been stuck in your little own circle, and you can't tell how to get along because you're not into community. You're into evil eye. You're into control. You're into cult watching. You have all your people planned and orchestrated to, you know, occult. Ooh, that's how it is. That's really how it is right now, dysfunction. That's why I have a harder time right now, this second, not knowing how I can get in. I, it helps me because I'm a hard worker and I have great joy. I do a lot of things. But it's so nice to be able to visit a fellow church and get in with the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's I know myself. I can I know the Word. I love the Bible. But listen, there's something about getting in the worship and praising the Lord and dancing. and It's a, a release, a therapy. And I don't dare go at this point where they're pretty deep because there's nothing without witch watching. That accuser of the cistern, the white cistern, or the brethren, whomever. So this is patriarchal, the patriarchal matriarchal of the ministry. The patriarchy of the ministry is this. All right, shepherding movement. I believe it is combined with a lot of things, tradition, country law, old timey up in the hills, you know, that 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 woman's a Jezebel. Yeah, no. Whatever, misogyny. It goes back to the 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 Mount Williams school of law. <laughs> but then there is also the uh, New England patriarchs, we're whelp, who came over, founded our nation. Thank goodness for the good ones. There were, you know, many Christians, but then they had the group that was off had it ought against females and they had occult false teaching and they were the whelp the new england whelp who had the salem witch trials and the salem witch trials go way back i believe because i've really thought this over for god ahead of me i had such a dad who was not like that all the men in my family were not like, i never had this it was murderous this has been a murderous witchcraft assault and very difficult and different unusual discovery thank god i knew the lord billy graham type person thank god i knew faith thank god i knew people that were not like that i go way back you know when i was in college i got turned on to the lord right before i went to college as a jesus person and i was baptist and they were not fundamentalists or right wing they were not flamethrowing baptists they were like billy graham type gentle folk so i went to school at University of Richmond, and the, it was just when praise and worship was starting, and I was so glad because I'm not a hymn kind of person. I was raised with hymns, but I was so glad when they I went off campus to a Presbyterian church who had praise and worship. When I was there, at the end of the meeting, because I had prayed, you know, Lord, I don't want to get off into error. That's really been my prayer. And someone led me, you know, they said, do you want to know about praying in the Spirit, and get a baptism of the Holy Spirit after the meeting. And I said, Lord, if it be thy will, and he did. And it was so easy going. It was so relaxed. You know, it's like nothing happened except I got more discernment. Well, later, in a Bible study, I remember there was a Bible study. I was <laughs> on campus, and I used to do the, the bulletin boards for the, for the Christian group. Anyway, I remember that that back in the day that um that the that it was so not loving i mean it was so not hard it was so easy to know jesus it was nice it wasn't like this complex you know we got to be gifted we got to be talented we got to be approved to be accepted in the beloved so i was at a bible study i guess i was like 19 or 20 and it was down in the basement of the college of the campus uh whatever the chapel and i remember seeing a scripture was studying about the gifts of the spirit being a baptist you know the gifts of the spirit and there was one passage it says discernment of spirits so i'm always been an adventurous person with the lord i might be timid or reserved i'm not a good with giant crowds sometimes but i'm i've gotten better but i thought i didn't know what discernment of spirits and that's all I prayed. I had no clue what God would be doing. I discern it is big. It has really grown, but it's never been fright. I have never been more calm. Nothing really bothers me.
And so uh, I said, yes, you're right. That was like 2006, maybe, seven. And I thought, that's it. I felt so comforted. But when I went back the next week, he was there, the top leader, the famous Christian. He was a whelp. So I went over softly, like I always am gentle and quiet. And I went over. There he was in the hall. I thought, I'll introduce myself, a new person. You know, it's nothing wrong with that, like I've done many times. And I went over to say hello. And he went, the whelp stare. The whelp spirit manifested. I went, oh, my gosh. So I tried it one more time. And besides that, there were some faults, you know, things he was saying about other ministers calling him out. I don't, I don't go back if people are calling him out. But I met him another time, and the same thing. He was shaking hands in a line. I was just leaving and going to say hello and thank you. And all of a sudden he goes, like he's seen the adulterer, harlot. That's the spirit on whelp, accuser of the sister and mother. And, and it has always something to do with sex. They always want to know your sex stuff. It They have issues. And I don't deal with that. That's disgusting. See, I don't come from that. My father was not a whelp. My father didn't play around. My father was faithful to my mother. He would not have viewed porn. My father was a one-woman man, a whole family of them. And this is disgusting to you who do that. I'm letting you know on behalf of many people. Not just me. God said, to have on this journey when I'm teaching you, calling you to study the body of Christ from age 24, 1976 to now, if you see something, if I let you find something, stumble onto it, discover something that hurts people or hurts my good name, my safe name, says the Lord, three times or more different places, that is my sign to you that you are to teach on it because see a lot of it. I see a lot of it and that is why. So I'm teaching country law good old boys and good old persons that these are humans first. They're not it. They're not objects. They're not chattel. They're not to be used. They're not to be, you know, Google after. You're supposed to not look for chinks in your armor. That is disgusting. And that's why I'm rebuking it. That spirit. So long story short... So I went to that, I tried again, because I was trying to affiliate, you know, I tried to go to church. So I went over there, and, and it happened again. And I went back and I told my friends, who were a black bishop, that were Pentecostal more, Pentecostal, and my friends, and I said, this is so frustrating, all I wanted to do is say hello. And the Pentecostal bishop said, you know, I went to that church and tried it out, and he did it to me. See, that's what I really thought. I thought it is a bigoty spirit. Every time anything bad happens like that with these people, I always think this is how they do black people too. This is must level like the demonic spirit, a targeting spirit. This is how bad it That's why I'm very passionate about bias, about prejudice, about... Right, and also pro rightly discerning the body of Christ for your sake, because it. So if I teach against racism, bigotry, Jezebel spying, it's because they typecast people. They never. I want to talk about this. I hope my signal doesn't cut off. If it does, I'll start another one. All right. When I would go down and I found that I trigger it, that I'm a litmus test for discovering it, so I can read it back, study the people group. I find their red state. They're all white. They have barely any women. Back then they had no women. The Levitical patriarchs, just like Levi, who was, before he got older, he was a murderous misogynist who disrespected women and many issues. He was the middle-born child of Leah, the disfavored wife. Okay, there are a lot of issues that go back to train on. So anyway, I didn't realize that I triggered it, but now I do, so I'm comfortable. But in 1998 was when I first discovered I went down to say hello at a conference, a big conference. I'd never been there to visit. And so I was there, and I wanted to say thank you or hello or something, just to head guy, the head leader. And I thought, I'll just go down because it had been in Richmond around the region for years. My father, you know, I'm in ministry. So I went up to say hello and thank you, and this person who's bigger than me, he went, a big boy. <laughs> he went, and he took three steps backwards. Listen, it makes you feel 
weird. But also you notice, whoa, what in the world they got going on here? What is their thought? Who do they think is, what is this? What do they see on me, Lord? What am I doing? So I realized that was the big shot ministry. It was a big shot ministry. And I don't know, but hate to say it. I think they must think they're chick men. You know, they were, that groupies are after them. You got to be better than that, men. Got to be better than that. But nobody has ever done that. It was so, so defiling, so disrespectful, so evil conscious. So it makes me really pay attention to who I'm. So with that, because I'd seen some of it in Virginia, religious stuff. So I thought, all right, if I'm being racially profiled, because I had a couple other instances with that same targeting turnout demonic group. I thought, and we forgive them. I liked them. I could have worked it out. They changed and repent, you know, nothing problem. So I, what I did was I thought, um, if there's, if I am, if I fit a racial profile for the Levitical patriarchs, that, which I didn't have that name for him then, but I noticed I triggered the same style, whelp. So I profiled him back, and this is how I got. They were Western European background. They were patriarchal, and I look matriarchal, but I'm not. I'm a, my mom was a matriarch, and I learned don't be a matriarch. <laughs> dad was not a patriarch, but he's daddy. I want to be like him. His mom had a, you know, sort of dominating side. I thought, I don't want to be like that. So anyway, there's no excuse for this, but I'm letting you know you can get delivered. It's dysfunctional. Especially if you've never met the person, you've never talked to them, and you've judged them with this demonic, Teutonic stuff. So back then, in 1998, I started to watch them back. And now I'm watching them back all the time if they do if that thing flares up. So I realized they were, they were sedentary, white. They were uh, had a token African-American, though they wanted to be not racist. They had no women at all. In fact, they had a, the women in the crowd when I'd go to these things where the LP spirit is. I thought, these women look oppressed. They look down. I wasn't down, and maybe that's why I triggered it, because I'm not down. <laughs> Unless I get tired <laughs> of the dysfunction. So I really noticed then later, they at that time, at that important time, they sold a lot of Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel books in their ministry. And I thought, you know, it, it made me realize they've gotten, because I was in Word of Faith before, and faith comes by hearing. This is a Christian teaching, not just Word of Faith, but I honor the positivity of that group right now. All right. The Bible teaches me that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. That means positive faith. Keep your mind on God's word, the positive power of the Holy Spirit, the joy of the Lord. But if you have negative faith, the nightly news, Jezebels are coming to take us down. The women are all Jezebels, you know, misogyny, a mixture, all that stuff. Jezebel, I thought, to me, I analyzed it. I thought, all right, they have enthroned the power of Jezebel. They're look, they've enthroned Jezebel. I call it enthroning Jezebel. I even wrote an article or two. They've enthroned Jezebel with their faith, and now they're pulling it in, or they're thinking they're projecting accusation on strangers through dysfunction. So this is why we're correcting it, and hope they will get better to find a remedy. <laughs> you need to be delivered. So God is so good. He's kept me. He's made me feel so, I don't know, godly content no matter what and even though sometimes it's a bad religious spirit you know you go through some really times that are strange God has kept me pretty free and joyful I can pull myself out of it no it's the devil it ain't people that mean to do it they're not meaning to but they're doing it so you better clean up your act when you go into a cult spirit witch watching any kind of cult legalism issues that are not healthy at all here's the issue because of all the TMZ attack diatribes, calling people false preachers, calling people prosperity, some of them called Billy Graham fault. I mean, you don't know the attack and accusation every single, I can't even hardly watch a video now <laughs> as I scan through the YouTube. Oh, my stars. So we're taking this apart. All right. Bottom line. Bottom line. 
Only Christ had 100% perfect doctrine, Jesus Christ. Even Paul said, follow me only as I follow Christ. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because he knew he was human. He had compassion. He had a holy fear of the Lord, like I do. All right, with that said, then I asked the Lord, I talked to the Lord, I said, Lord, what about talking about false prophets? If only Jesus was 100% true prophet, true, and Paul was, you know, true as best we can tell, you know, he did his best, then how do we figure out how much to go and tolerate when we go visit a conference, a church, and join? And the Lord said to me, he said, Tavo, according to working out your own salvation, it is between you, every person, and God, how much false teaching they will sit under, because you know everybody's going to have some, including myself. So that's why I'm submitting silas, not dogma. you got to hear God. I trust authority, but I want God to confirm it with the Bible and myself, conscience. So the issue is you need to go. Well, I've gotten where I cannot take. I have paid my dues more than once with being defiled, targeted, where I could feel it. Witchcraft. Real witchcraft. Oh, yeah, you can go there. Oh, yeah, they're so wonderful. Yeah, that's your choice. But I will say I will not call and accuse you for being a false prophet. That is just all I've heard all my life is middle income tiny churches and medium churches LP and not LP that are all charismatic, spirit filled Pentecostal types not everyone, but a lot of them all I know is my memory of rural Virginia is they're false prophets, you know he's a false prophet she's a false prophet, they're a false prophet that's all you hear on the airwaves really it is now that is your choice, I will not do it but I'll teach doctrine and then you can figure it out if they're true and false and how much you feel called to do it. Let me say this. If I go, there are people that have got the gift to stand more than others. Maybe want to talk to people and say, should I be sitting there? Because you don't know the invisible realm like I do that has can really make you feel oppressed, depressed, uh, cause you struggle and warfare you didn't know existed like demonic attack. That's why I'm teaching this big the bathwaters of the doctrine, not just the music, the singing, the performance, the message, it's the relationships, and then what are they doing in the leadership? Are they talking against you? Are they backbiting? Are they wording word curses on you? Are they praying for you, against you, or for you? That is the big deal. Are they Jezebel? They smile to your face, but they're really calling you a Jezebel, putting you on the witch list. That's why we're talking about this, because it's that big and that bad. Why do I have to go to the... Let me say this as a rhetorical question for all. Who wants to go through that just to go worship Jesus and find fellowship with the saints? Why? That's why I'm making this series. I heard the witch watcher call my name. And it's so bad. It's like a spiritual... You want to go to God in a spiritual haven, not Hades. <laughs> to have to always be pulling the knife out of your... Joy's having to be the knife out of your back. It really is. It took after I got rid of finished the last cult final blow <laughs> in two thousand one up here when I felt the the last two I knew they were scanning me, they're divining me and psychic reading me and they were speaking and it was so bad, but there's some I like the people in general. I liked it. But not that being defiled. They couldn't they were white witches. <laughs> So the final blow, I was sitting there listening for God, trying to hear God coming up from a new area, you know, to a new area. And I felt this, like, pencil probing me for the first time. I thought, this is horrible. What in the world are they letting do? Who is allowing Who are they picking to do this? It wasn't just scanning. It was worse. There that pencil was. I thought, what? This is witchcraft. There is nothing more. I would never act like this had it not been that horrible so demonic damnable so i thought i'm not going back to that why am i putting myself under witchcraft and so i and so and then word cursing oh i have many 